Welcome to Make Something With Me, David Picciuto. Today we are going to make these offset spatulas, sometimes called icing spatulas. We are going to cut and bend stainless steel as well as make the handle out of some fancy wood and some brass pins using some basic woodworking tools. Before we get into this, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor and that is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for a long time. Not only my main website, makesomething.com, but my podcast website, makingapodcast.com, and my go-kart racing league, all Squarespace sites. I used to be a web developer. I used to make websites from scratch, from the ground up. Luckily, I don't have to do that anymore because Squarespace makes that super easy. They have beautiful templates to get you started. If you wanna sell your art and the crafts that you make, Squarespace is the place to go. You can sell online and in person point of sale through the Squarespace app. That is super cool. You can sell both physical and digital items. And if you want to build a community and have a password protected members only section of your website, you can do that with Squarespace. So visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the making of these offset spatulas. One of my favorite YouTubers, Claire Saffitz, recently put out a video of her favorite kitchen gadgets and her number one was this offset spatula. My number one most favorite, prized, useful, recommended, all the superlatives, kitchen tool is the small or baby offset spatula. It is my tool of choice for spreading butter on my toast, for spreading cake batter into a pan, for scraping, you know, if I'm taking a cookie off of a cookie sheet, I just can get right under it and lift it up. I use it to frost a cake. I love it so much that I named it. We just dubbed it Count Spatula. I want to make one. I recently put out a book, Make Your Own Kitchen Tools, and if I would have known about this tool, I would have put it in the book. So today, I am going to make Claire's favorite tool. I ordered some stainless steel from McMaster Car. It still has the protective coating on there. And then I have this Wange from KenCraft. This should be a pretty easy project. So the very first thing I want to do is cut a strip out of this shape it to size, and then we'll start working on the handle. We got some crazy bends to put in there as well. We'll figure it out as we go. So I got some metal cutting bits for my jigsaw here, and I'm just going to follow the line. Whew. So. We had to switch blades. I had, at first I had for very thin and the, this one, I had very thin, which was within this range here, but it like instantly killed the blade. So I went with something that's made for a little bit thicker material and it cut through, but like you can see that blade's burnt. So what I need to do is get a metal cutting blade for the bandsaw, that would have been a lot easier, or an angle grinder, but I didn't want to, it's cold, I don't want to go out into the garage and it's cold. That's how cold it is. I have this Wange from KenCraft. Next thing I want to do is cut it to length, so somewhere around right there, and then we will resaw it in half and then make our sandwich. And then I think after that we'll do our bending. Not sure if we're going to do the bending before or after epoxy and everything together. I'm making this up as I go, so we'll figure it out. So we got that resawed in half and that's going to go in there like so, and that goes like so and we can glue that together. I think before I do that, I'm going to sand that smooth. It's a little rough from the bandsaw. And this is a little bit wider than the wood. That's going to allow us some, some shaping. So how am I gonna flatten this? So now that we've got the handle part ready to go, I need to create two bends, one bend here, one bend here. And uh, 
I haven't quite figured it out how I'm going to do it, but I think I'm going to use these wooden clamps. So the very first thing I want to do is mark where I want those bends to go. So using this as our example, this is just a cheap one I got on Amazon. We want to say right there. And then what I'm trying to do is just control exactly where that bend is happening. Oh, that bends super easy. Yeah. And so I want these two to be parallel, which pretty darn close. We got that bend in there. I'm happy with it. I reworked it a little bit so it has more of a crease instead of the gradual bend. I just like that. Um, I don't know. It just has more of a factory feel with a crease instead of the, the gradual bend. So it is time to take the protective coating off of here and glue it together. This is going to go on Reddit slash R slash oddly satisfying. So I know from past experiences of making knives that I don't want to get epoxy squeeze out on here because it's super hard to clean up. So I'm just throwing some tape on there. You've heard of five minute epoxy. Let me introduce to you four minute epoxy. What movie is the uh, seven minute AF? Part of it is blue, but it says it dries clear. I read the directions, which is unlike me. You got a four minute working time and you have to mix for one to two minutes. And it looks like once all that blue goes away, it's, it's mixed. That's the impression that I'm getting. We have to decide how we want our end grain to look. So that is the natural way, but I kind of like it flipped and you get that cool look there, the chevron look. Dan, is this how you would do it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Dan's made more knives than, than I have. Although, quick plug, there is a knife project in my book. That one right there. It warmed up a little bit, so now we're out in the garage and I'm going to use the, the belt grinder and just kind of shape the handle, kind of flatten everything here, and then work on this, this profile here, clean out up that edge, and maybe uh, just come in just a little bit here on the sides and uh, just sand away until I feel satisfied. So I decided after grinding a little bit, I put some masking tape on there so I could grind down to a line. And so now we're peeling this off and I'm gonna do a little final shaping up here with a file. For some reason, the stainless steel only had the protective coating on one side. So this other side, I'm going to introduce the scratch pattern into there, just with some sandpaper. And then once we get that scratch pattern in there, we can then take the abrasive pad and polish. So that's looking pretty good. No, no sharp edges on there. And I like the way that polished up really nice. Got the bottom looking like the top and just using these red Scotch-Brite pads, um, they go up to a finer grit. So the finer that you go, the more of a mirror-like finish you're gonna get on there. So the next thing I need to do before I finish shaping the wood part of the handle is I'm going to drill a couple holes and insert some brass dowel rod in there to, what does that do? Just make sure the handle never falls, comes apart and moves, is that the purpose? That's what we're gonna do. I drew my center line on here and I'm going to drill three holes in here, two for a solid dowel, and then up at the top, I've got this hollow dowel. Well, I don't know what that's called. What is this called? Tube, it's called a tube. We're gonna tube the top 
here so this could be hung if you want to or if you don't want to even if you don't want to i think it's going to look cool and the outside diameter of both of these is the same so it'll, it'll have a nice consistent look And so, once again, mixing up some five minute epoxy. Four. Four minute epoxy. I cut them slightly too long, so they should be sticking out of both sides. Again, don't touch the epoxy with your hands. So now I'm going to use, this is Odie's oil. It's a, it's a food safe finish similar to like what you would put on a cutting board. So just wipe that on there. I made two of them. While you guys weren't looking, I made a second one. One a little bit smaller to see which one uh, I like better. That came out really, really good. A nice polish on there. Uh, again, that steel came from McMaster Car. They're not sponsored, but um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure why only one side was protected. The other side I had to sand and, and polish, but we got that. The wood came from KenCraft. You might want to check them out at KenCraftCompany.com. They're a local company, but they do sell online. I made these for Claire. You can go check out her YouTube channel. She's one of my favorites. I absolutely love her channel. Um, I've got a new book called Make Your Own Kitchen Tools. This pro I don't want to get this book dirty because this is going to go to somebody that's going to buy it. Um, but this project is not in the book, but I do have a knife project in the book. That knife is, is right there on the cover. So, uh, Dan, you gave me the wood for that project, didn't you? Yeah, Dan's a good guy. He is a good guy. That is going to wrap it up. Let's go shoot some glamour shots with these in the kitchen. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.